experience. <laughs> Speaking of hostess cupcakes, we, we, we uh, Christine and I went to a little uh, convenience store in uh, Niagara Falls, so on the Canadian side. And you know, of course, we had to look through all the weird stuff they had, which was basically just you know Nestle products instead of Hershey, whatever. But they did have like the the hostess like cupcakes. And we're like, oh, okay, let's ha ha ha, let's get the, the Canadian version and see. They really are worse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're small. They're they're small. They're tiny, like you know, you know <laughs> which made me laugh. Cause like American, yeah, we gotta have our big unhealthy cupcakes. Ah, but they were yeah, they were like tiny, and they weren't as good at all. Like, oh, just make them at home. Just make yours. Better <laughs> get yeah. well, sometimes, make it. sometimes you gotta have all those preservatives. Yeah, the like. Preservatives went way up after they got rid of the drivers. So. Oh, because now they ship them <gasps> right, right, oh, good yeah, for yeah. a month. You know. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, we used to rotate chain. them every four days. Four the, days. The supply oh, yeah. chain oh wow. And the nutritional labeling requirements and everything go together in the food chain. So huh. yeah. Years ago, they were better. Mm. <laughs> I loved them. Some Everything was better we'll years ago. Into the readings. <laughs> you know my taste buds. <laughs> oh gosh. So before we get, um, actually, before we look at uh, reading for next week, um, I was going to throw out there um, to see to kind of gauge what you guys thought about um, changing this a little bit. I mean, basically doing the same thing, but um, instead of looking for the weeks, looking at the readings for the week ahead. Um, just take a, a deeper dive into the readings for the day. Um, oh. So essentially, um, so like we, I mean, if we started next week, we'd, we'd actually be looking at the same thing that we're looking at today. <laughs> but um, so we'll I give can you skip the class next week. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what, what I'm saying is, yeah. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, everyone's going to agree to it. Um, so yeah, just um, to to do a little bit deeper look. So. Instead of looking ahead, so you, you kind of like get your head space and okay, the reading for for this coming week, um, since we you know we do our Sunday school first, um, you know you're going into the service with maybe a better understanding of what's going on in the text, which actually, you know, would would free me up a little bit to kind of delve into either the stuff I didn't talk about um, or the points that I don't bring up in the sermon that I really wanted to bring up, but yeah. because time and, and all that, uh, so it might actually I don't know if maybe you get a little bit more out of it because it's. It's that day, um, and uh, so. Well, next week is what rally day, so it's yes. kind of the reset for the whole Sunday that, school yeah, that's agenda. Right. Just, I mean, there are a lot of points like last Sunday sermon. There were all those extra points that we had actually kind of covered. Right. <laughs> or that's a bad word to use on Lutheran Church. Um, oh. Expanded upon in Sunday school last week that tied in with the sermon yeah. from last week. Yeah, so and, and we did actually talk more about what I <laughs> covered in that than, than this. Um, so, okay, cool. With that, I mean, there's no major objections? Mm -mm. Is there anything <coughs> in mind? Sounds good. I think it'd be great. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and plus it just, because most of my, like, so during the week, obviously, all my attention is on the Sunday readings. So, um, you know, for, for Looking ahead, I don't really even get into the nitty gritty of the text for the following week until you know tomorrow, Tuesday. So um, it kind of lessens the focus that I have for these kinds of readings. So you're going to definitely get a lot more in depth kind of stuff. So that way we can ask questions where we can't in the service. Sure, you have questions? <laughs> no, I don't. Know. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, uh, cool. Uh, then, uh, and, and really, whether um, I'll, I'm sure we'll, we can probably even talk about, um, well, so looking at the readings for next week, uh, Romans 13 is, boy, there's a great one. We can spend a lot of time talking about that. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. That's fun. Um, but, so we'll, we, we can save that one for next week. Because um, the gospel on the back page, Matthew 18, 1 through 20, 
is uh, oof, it's beefy. Um, good stuff. Really, I say that in the morning. It's like, oh, this is good stuff we have today. I'm waiting for that one day when I'm like, oh, these readings are terrible. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> this, it, it's a lot, um, and this is definitely one that can that gets picked apart a little bit. And a lot of it gets taken out of context. Um, and it really shouldn't be. So uh, why don't, how about somebody reads, I don't know if long, but um, if somebody could read Matthew 18, 1 through 20 there, and we'll just start diving into it. <coughs> Here we go. <laughs> Preparing myself. All right. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened about his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father, who is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Okay. So, it is keyed off by the question, right? Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? That is going to be the lens through through which we look at the whole rest of this text, okay? And um, it's important that you get this answer. <laughs> Obviously, it's the rest of the text depends on it, so that you understand who he's talking about and what it's talking about, okay? So, who is the greatest? What does he do? Calls a child. Calls a child. Okay. Um, puts him in the midst and says, "Unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven." Whoever humbles himself like his child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So, whoever humbles himself, right? Right. Okay. So, this is what we're going to be looking at. And the reason why I say you got to get this right and understand is because how, how, how this is usually, well, when this is brought up, and, and this is a great text for getting, just chopping up. We like to pull a little, uh, really worth chopping up scripture. So, you know, like, um, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. 
Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe me in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone. Okay. Usually when that's brought up, the image is, okay, whoever causes one of these little ones to sin, we think what? Children. 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 Little ones, right? Is he talking about children, though? No. No. He's not. Okay. Uh, the whole thing dealing with children here is he's not, you know, and, and this was a different, you know, back, back in the day, in those times, children were not held up as paragons of this is what you should strive for, to be like a child. Children didn't have any, I don't want to say inherent value. <laughs> they, they couldn't provide. They couldn't contribute to the household. You know, they couldn't go out and earn a living. They needed help. I mean, if anybody has dealt with children, they need a lot of help. <laughs> Connie's eyes just about popped out there. <laughs> Um, they, they, they are completely dependent, you know, especially if you think of baby. I mean, absolutely dependent. Can't do anything. Teenagers can't do anything. Um, <laughs> young adults. <Parallel. laughs> Adult children can't do anything. Uh, but no, little children um, really are dependent completely. And they don't, um, they, they just, there's nothing that they really bring to the table until they're older <coughs> and whatnot. So it's, when Jesus points out children as a um, as an object to to look at what he's referring to is their complete dependence children are utterly dependent um, now it, did, it does not mean that children weren't loved um, especially in Jewish Christian you know kind of umbrella uh, children of course were, were very much loved different story in Roman circles and other pagan circles where you know Especially those where children could be sacrificed for their gods, you know. But um, so when we're getting into who is the greatest, and he, he uses a child as an object illustration, he's pointing to their complete dependence. So who is the greatest? Whoever humbles himself um, by acknowledging, I'm completely dependent. I've got nothing. That I, you know, this is the Lord have mercy, right? Lord have mercy, I've got nothing. I need you because I can't do anything, can't save myself, can't do anything. Complete dependence. So that starts to color then how we read this. So whoever receives one such child in my name is not talking about who receives, you know, all the little guys up at the children's message. He's talking about he who receives any of us. We who humble ourselves in dependence to God um, so if, if we receive a, a brother and sister in Christ who are completely, you know, depending on uh, Christ, we receive Jesus. But whoever causes one of these little ones, us, anybody, to stumble, that's bad, okay? And so here we get then, so the bad thing is causing to stumble, right? Stumble, sin fall away. That's going to be the other key to understand properly what's going on here. So, who is the greatest? He who is utterly dependent on God. What is the, the great sin to, to, to watch yourselves for? Is causing one of these guys to stumble. Because they are utterly dependent. And it's easy to take advantage of people who are utterly dependent. Like pastors preying on the Absolutely. people? Absolutely. Um, yeah, big time. But I mean, any certainly pastors, people, anytime you're in a position of authority um, over somebody, you have power over somebody. Um, I mean, we see this playing out in, in, even in the secular world, you know, um, kind of the, the Me Too movement um, in, you know, in Hollywood and all that, how it's like talking about people in positions of power who are abusing those under them. And it doesn't have to, you don't, you don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to be like famous or whatever. I mean, whatever power you have over somebody, it is very easy to abuse. Um, and if, <laughs> if you don't think that, then you've never had a taste of power, even if it's a little bit. Um, I, I, I don't, I have not had many opportunities to feel like power or like I'm in control of something. Um, but the, the, the few little bits and pieces or when I've been, you know, near it, or near, you know, either any kind of sort of, if you want to call, I mean, if you want to call it fame, but just sort of glory of some kind. 
it's amazing how quickly it's like, ooh, that's nice. I like that. Neat. And not that it, you immediately go to, how, ooh, how can I, ha, ha, ha. But you can very easily see how it's like, wow, this is really attractive. And I kind of like this. And how easy would it be for me to get what I wanted? I would never do such a thing. It's, it's just, this is why, you know, in this little discourse here, Jesus says, okay, who is the greatest? Dependents. Now, knowing that, be very careful with them because you will harm them easily. Okay. Um, in, in that context, is it? It makes me think that the causing to stumble would be encouraging a person to think that that they are not dependent. That could be that, yeah. That or, or encouraging them towards uh, self. pride or yeah. self. Absolutely. It, it doesn't necessarily just have to be like a top down, like pressing down. It could be like a what do you want to call it? A, um, Prodding, um, what's the word I was thinking of? Um, not facilitating, but, oh, there's the word. Enabling? That, thank you. Yes, enabling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're really going to miss you next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've been around. I've been well, in no, these I, relationships, okay? <laughs> I, I kind of know this. I, all right. the, the, the drill. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, to enable somebody to go down. Um, so it wouldn't just be like preying on somebody in a kind of way, but um, yeah, encouraging somebody that any in any way that takes them away from scripture. Um, so like, oh yeah, you know, rely on yourself, which is just like not a Christian thing to say. Um, rely on Christ. Um, what did I see? I was at the gym and somebody was wearing a shirt that said something like, uh, I think it was something to the effect of, you know, never apologize for who you are. And I was like, <laughs> like and clearly you're not a Lutheran. Um, I, I, it was funny because, like, yeah, I mean, the, the very first thing we do in our service is apologize for everything that we are. Um, but so, yeah, to the, even like silly T-shirt theology would be to um, to encourage somebody to, however and whatever way, drift away from, from I think Christ. Of how often we encourage people to. We tell them they can be any, whatever they want to be. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe homeschooling is a good true. idea. <sighs> yeah, that's, um, you know, and I don't know, uh, I, I assume that it was the, the, the self-esteem movement of the 80s and 90s. I think it was kind of in just a, sort of isolated to that. Because mm -hmm. um, I remember it like in junior high, like elementary school was normal, and we get I got to junior high, and I remember we had to take, everybody had to take a class called Teen Issues. And it was, I mean, it was basically a self-esteem class. Um, I mean, it was, you know, we were supposed to be like, oh, now you're ready, you're getting ready to go into high school. We had to do like little shoebox dioramas where we, you know, paste little cutouts from magazines that made us feel good about ourselves and like whatever. I'm like, oh God, we're doing this, okay. Um, and you know, we had this whole, um, God. <laughs> well, I mean, to their credit, I remember this. This was how many years ago? Um, we all had to make this little piece of paper and write Iolac on it. And it was, and, and we, you put it on, you wear this, it's an Iolac sign. It means I am loving and capable. And so, the, and the lesson was, you know, anytime somebody says something mean to you, they, they tear a little piece away uh, off your sign. And so that's what happens is when you, you they, people tear, tear away your Iolac sign. So that, you know, you, you are loving and capable. You are everything that you need, and you are just great just the way you are, and people want to tear that down, so you can't let them tear that down. You need to, and it was all this kind of like, you know, in yourself, you're good, you're, you're good enough, you're smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like you. Um, that whole thing. Um, yeah, that, did, that was horrible. Um, yeah, and then the whole, oh, you can, you can be whatever you want. It's like, no, you can't. Um, it's like even like professional sports is like somebody said like I, I wish I could play football and somebody said well you could you could be whatever you want it's like no I can't I know I can't <laughs> um, well if you dedicated yourself to it it's like ah okay if I dedicate myself to it first of all I don't want to I don't want I want to be it but I don't want to dedicate well well now it, well, you you have to well, oh you just said I can be whatever I want mm -hmm. now you put in qualifiers um, 
but also just the thing of like, you know what? Honestly, I could. I could exercise, I could try, I could condition this into something that can play football, but there are people who are naturally gifted who will just wipe the floor with me. And I won't have a chance because they actually have a physical gift for it. Um, in the C.S. Lewis class, the cardinal virtues in society of prudence, which is common sense, mm -hmm. Uh, the one first virtue is listed. I think that went out the door, as I said in the class, with the 60s, and then in was ushered yeah. the self esteem movement. Yeah. And the common sense, you know, I can't be a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm little and thin, and I think you could put it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Football. Football with a baby. Right, right. I can't play football. That's On the real. other hand, you should be thankful for who you are. Oh, uh, yeah. absolutely. Well, <laughs> thankful for the, the distinctiveness of what God made right. you, right? Well, and that's even going to the wayside where it doesn't matter how God made you. Again, you can you can regard it however you want. You can do whatever you want with this or whatever. Um, but I mean, even physiologically speaking, it's like I can, if I wanted to be like a a a, a live gymnast, it's like my frame will never be that. Like the, the, my so I, it always killed me, like when I was growing. Like I, 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 my when I'm even when I'm when I slim down, when I buy like a, a nice sports coat, it's like I have to get one with a big ass chest. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that went out, you know. <laughs> no well, one's watching. It's fine. Right. No one's hearing this. Let's see. I'm writing that down. What was that? <laughs> okay. Again, this is why I write out my sermons. Okay. This, this is why you, you will never see me go off. Onto a thing, but I mean seriously, because I I just have a broad chest. I mean, even it, when when I was at my my slenderest in my twenties, when I was like, oh, and and I had a personal trainer and everything. I mean, it's still it's like okay, I I will never be comfortable in a any in a large T-shirt. When when I got down to one eighty, which was like the, the the least I've ever been, I was like, Phew. um, I was okay, working out every day. Yeah, a large T-shirt was like, it was just too. You know, I'm like, no. So I was like, uh, it's not gonna oh, happen. Right. It's not in the cards. So I said, like, yeah, I can't be. I don't know how this. <laughs> okay, back to sin. <laughs> <laughs> Airing out all of my weird body. Today's issues. after school special: uh, pastor's uh, body yeah. issues. <laughs> my, my body, myself. Yes, this is. I also got weird toes. Ask Heather. But, um, <laughs> Honestly, ask her right, about. Okay, I'm not going to say. No, I, I, no, I'm not going to say anything else. But yeah. I think it'll be absolutely hilarious if you ask her, "What's wrong with Pastor's toes?" <laughs> ask her that. She will laugh, and then she'll probably tell you. That's funny. Um, my dad used to say when he worked at the hospital, "What you see, what you hear. When you weep, you weep a tear." <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do. That's, that's why we have to be very careful with Lily, because she she talks too much. Um, she spills a secret to. All the stuff we say at home that she's not supposed to talk about. <laughs> anyway, so back to this. <laughs> that was a fun. That was fun. You're gonna miss that, right? <laughs> oh, I... you'll, you'll get it afterwards when you watch it online. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, so these this is the important thing. All right, so and and woe woe to the world for temptations of sin. Okay, it's necessary that they that they come, but woe by whom they come. So if you tempt one of these to sin. You know, whoa! And when Jesus says, whoa, you should pay attention, because, you know, he has a lot to say about love and mercy. <laughs> but when he says, whoa, it's like, whoa, okay. So, um, and, and to the degree, they, I mean, and to, to make sure he's getting across that this is serious, he's like, okay, so, if your hand or foot causes you sin, cut it off. Um, and I, I've heard guys who, who try to temper this and kind of make it into the whole like you know he, he's not literally meaning cut it off you know we don't have to go around being all literal about this he's just kind of trying to make a point which is true he is but honestly i think there is some truth to this <laughs> where he's like this is how serious it is okay all things being equal if if you could like if you're now the reality is it's your heart that causes you to sin okay but i mean the reality would be is if your hand honestly all of a sudden got a mind of its own <laughs> and it was doing things and you didn't want it to do, then yeah, you'd be best to cut it off. If you can't control it, get rid of it. 
there are relationships like that? Hmm? There are relationships like that. Sure. You know, if your 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 friend group is going and you're like, don't do that, don't do that, flee temptation. Yeah. Well, we're talking in the sermon today. We're talking about denying ourselves. That sometimes we have to say, no, this is not. I I can't. I can't be a part of this. Absolutely. Um. So you know, this is this is serious stuff. Um. So then, verse ten: See that you do not despise one of these little ones. Again, we always go to children. Do not despise the little children. You know, and this is a great. You know, we bring this message out for anybody who's complaining about the kids in the, in the service. You know, it's like, no, do not despise the little ones. Let them come. It's like, he's not talking about that. I mean, children fall under the umbrella, but so do all of we. Do not despise these people, anybody who needs you. Um, and <sighs> now nah, that's a tangent. I'm not going to go there. Look at how I'm growing right before your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that, that, that train going off. I'm like, oh, it's great. All right, um, so do not despise these other ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. So, and, uh, and this is where we like to pull this out, too, and talk about this is where we get guardian angels, right? And yeah, this is, Jesus says that somehow they're, they have angels. The dependent ones, the children have angels. And we always say, well, yes, guard my child. But it's not just children. It's us. Mm -hmm. Those who depend on Christ alone have angels assigned to us, which is awesome. Now, don't take it any further than that because Jesus doesn't tell you. He doesn't say how this works. He doesn't tell you how many you've got. Um, just, okay, fine. There's angels who always see the face of the Father in heaven. Okay. Uh, for the Son of Man came to save the lost. Okay, if a man has a hundred sheep, one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain and go in search of the one? He finds it, truly, he rejoices more than the ninety-nine that went, um, that never went astray. So it is the will of my Father in heaven that one, uh, that one of these little ones, um, uh, that, they, that they don't perish. So he's making the point that this is how important it is to care for and watch out to protect these ones who are so dependent that... Um, they are the most crucial in the kingdom. And so in our little congregation here, you know, who is the greatest, who is the most crucial that we need to be mindful of? The weakest. The ones who are totally dependent. Um, you know, too often in churches, you know, who, who, who are the greatest? Well, the ones who give the most, the ones who've been here the longest, the ones who have the, the most authority, sway, whatever, um, the ones who are, you know, at every single event, every Bible study, have all the right answers. It's like, according to what Christ says, that's not necessarily, well, that's, that's not the case. Um, especially when it comes to, like, giving and authority and everything else. It's like, no, the greatest in the congregation is probably the one that you least want to be with. Um, because they got nothing to offer. They're dependent on, on Christ completely. Um, so this upends a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. And then, this is a big one. So you, you're reading through this, and, and you see this kind of line that's, he's, he's carrying through this, this, this thread of, of, of thought here, right? And then you get to uh, verse 15, which seems to, like, you're going all, all you know, talking, 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 then he goes, Wait. and now we get a, a section that is always lifted up. We, we like to take this out and say, okay, we call this 15 through 20, well, really 15 through uh, 17. <laughs> this is what we call church discipline. Hey, this is our framework for how we deal with those sinners amongst us. All right? So if your brother sins against you, right, you need to fix it. Go tell him his fault. Confront him. Tell him the fault between you and him alone. Okay? Step one. Step two, or, or step well, if he listens to you, awesome, great, you gained your brother. Circle that gained your brother thing. Um, but if he doesn't listen, all right, we'll take one or two others along with you. Gang up on him. <laughs> Nothing like some peer pressure and, and shame and guilt to, you know, to get somebody to confess. Um, you know, established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So it, it's not ganging up on him, obviously, but to like, hey, it's not just me. You know, I, I, you, you're sinning. And it's not, it's not just me that notices, you know, these guys notice it too. Refuse to listen, well then tell it to the church. So hey, public shaming is great. 
<laughs> Air it all out there for all the, to hear it, okay? As long as they don't have stones. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Cast him out of your midst. Well, you can go two ways with that. You can either say, well, be to as a Gentile as a tax collector, dirty, unclean, on one side. Or you can say, well, Christ reached out to Gentiles and tax collectors, so love them even more. Just, okay. This um, is the one who went astray. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the brother who sinned is the one who's gone astray. See, and, and this is where it's like th this, as a loose, general idea, kind of, for church discipline, eh, okay, it's, 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 we, we can take this and, and be like, okay, the, the principles, as long as you understand them properly, are good. But he doesn't talk about, like, okay, concern for the least, who is truly the greatest. The greatest is the most dependent among you, okay? They're the greatest. Um, don't cause them to sin. Um, if you do tempt them to sin, this is what you should do to yourself. Don't despise these guys. You know, God loves them so much that he would, he would leave all of you who are completely set and you, you think you don't need God, and he'll search out that one. That's how important this person is. Now, so that person who sins against you, what is the, what is the danger? What, so you see, okay, this is where I think we, we, we go Phew! with it, is that, your brother who has sinned against you, we hear that and it says, okay, I am the one who is aggrieved. He sinned against me, right? But what's, what's the danger in that? It's not that you are somehow offended or, or deeply like, oh, woe is me. What is the problem? You, you want to bring him back to God. You want to bring him back, because he, so if here's God and here's the guy, <laughs> he's going that way. He has sinned against you, which, okay, but it's not about you, right? You're, because this whole thing is not like, hey, this is about you. It's about, it's about this guy. This is about his relationship with God. He's dependent on God. This one who is completely and utterly dependent about God with, or, uh, for God, he has nothing of his own. He is, for whatever reason, being tempted away, tempted into sin, right? So he is drifting away. So it's not like, oh, you are aggrieved. Like, no, this person is in danger. You know, this is the one sheep going off in wolf territory. Now, here's the flock, safe, secure. The sheep has do 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 where there's wolves. Okay. You're not like, damn it, sheep. <laughs> you, mm, mm, mm. No, you're like, oh, let me, let me get back there and bring this sheep back. Okay? So telling him his fault, his sense, like, hey, this is bad, this is dangerous. You're going down this road, and this is not good for you. Come back lovingly. You know, obviously, you, you want to bring him back. If he listens, you have what? One Gained, yeah, one or even, uh, yeah. Gained or won your brother. He's back. It's not like you have, like, oh, well, I, ha -ha. Be besides, like, what have you done? <laughs> you know, Christ is the one who forgives, right? Um, you won. You've gained him back. He's back into the, the family, the fold. All right, if he doesn't listen, take one or two others with you. Not to gang up, but to be like, look, see, it's not just me. We care about you. We want you to be okay. We don't want you to go down this road. We want you to, to, to be. We don't want you going this way. We want you going back. You know, we want you back in God. We, we, we don't want to lose you, Okay. I think that's where it comes, the next steps, is with other people. Because that would be you and some others against that authority figure. Um, and then if that doesn't work, the whole congregation. Which, I, I'm, you know, this is kind of like very Pollyanna, well, of course that'll work. Unfortunately, in those situations, it's, it, it is a, an uphill battle, for sure. Um, ideally, you know, the, the authority figure is humbles himself and acknowledges that he is not God and um, would acknowledge his sinfulness and seek forgiveness, reconciliation, all that. 
Um, that's not say, and it, this is not easy. I mean, even if it's not an authority figure, I mean, people are stubborn. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed or not. Um, but people really get stuck in. But yeah, it, that's why it's like, it's not just you. It's, it's you and somebody else, a couple others, the congregation. Sometimes, well, <laughs> okay, well, you guys may not. You guys would know all well about confronting an authority figure who might be maybe taking things down the wrong road and maybe afflicting people in the congregation. <laughs> That's, there might have been a pastor in the past <laughs> of this congregation who did that for a brief time before I, I, I learned this week that he was, uh, I didn't know he was asked to leave. Um, but yeah, I, I won't mention any names because we're online. But, um, <laughs> I think you all know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and that was, I mean, ask anybody who was here for that, how difficult that was. And how, you know, that was from everything I've heard, just terrible. I mean, no, no one should ever be put in that position. Um, and I'm not, I'm not gonna wade into that at all. I wasn't here, I don't have, I don't have a dog in that fight. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we're here where we are. That's where I stand. Um, but yeah, that's it's, it's rough. Yeah. And sometimes it takes the congregation. Is this, Jesus is talking about this in the context of believers, the, the church, what would eventually be the, the church, mm -hmm. this including God's promises. I'm thinking in, in social terms of um, the things that have happened in the shoe in the past 10 years where sexual abuse yeah. issues Right. Um, patients and doctors, I mean, it took a long time to come out. Yeah. Um, it's really hard in, yeah. in, to say, I have love for the abuser, for the perpetrator. I want to win him back. It's like, it's, that's really, that's just like, really it's, it's a little bit different in that context because we're not dealing with the church. I mean, and that is like, there's, like we're we're not as concerned about reconciliation in that er arena so much as justice. Yes, absolutely. That's that's because in that arena, that's what we're concerned about. Okay. <laughs> not to say that the gospel doesn't exist in there, Is that but the, the, the left hand, right hand, hand kingdom. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, the left, uh, the right hand. The left hand kingdom is the kingdom of the gospel. Right. Yeah. No, the right hand. Right hand. Um. Yeah. Left hand. Um. So yeah, that's that's ruled by the law. This will so. come up in the in the high school Sunday school class, I'm sure. Oh, um, great. Um, because yeah, that that's that demands justice. So he's and, and Jesus is definitely talking about in the congregation, the flock. So and and even in in the example of an authority figure in the flock, would be um, the desire is not. Well, even that's the, the, it's, it's more of a greater concern there because not just that this authority figure has aggrieved us but that authority figure by virtue of his position if he is going this way he can bring a lot of people with him and that's even worse so it is more vital that um, you try to win and gain him back and see this is this is the part where it gets really rough for us because if you've gotten to that point where it's taking you to bring everybody in nobody it's really hard for people to look at it in terms of, hey, we're trying to come back together. Because really it's us against him, us against you, us against whatever, very confrontational. And it is really, you've gotta be, I mean, uh, it can be done, I'm sure. It's tough though, because we're just, well, I mean, just the way we look at it, like, oh, my brother sins against me, it's, uh, it's, it's conflict. And we're like, well, I mean, it is, but we're, we're our goal is to bring unity back. Be reconciled. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you've also got to keep it. It's not, it's reconciliation, not necessarily ignorance. So think of couples going through a hard time with a separation. They may come back together, but it may not be the same as it was before. There right. may be some, I, I mean, I'm just saying that in the sense of we think, oh, yeah. we're trying to reconcile and bring them back together. And everything's going to be nice and nobody will ever think anything oh, is any different. Right, right, no. And the, point is it may be different from that point on but the sure. point is you're bringing them 
Right, right. It, it back is together. It, it's it's to get to here. Now the road to there will be rough, and especially yeah. in the context of like reconciliation in the marriage mind. or relationship. I mean, that's yeah. Especially when like infidelity is involved. I mean, yeah, it's like it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough road. Um, and it, it, it will never be the same. Right. But to her point about the one in charge, I mean, that's just like a marriage issue yes. in a way. Yes. Darn quickly. Darn pens. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. No. His, there we go. His, Dwayne. All good. His. Down. His bad. Um, so yeah, this is, this is all about, again, looking at the one who is dependent, who needs that extra care. And that's really hard in the case you mentioned prior too because he was supposed to be a spiritual leader. Right. Well, and and it's yeah. <laughs> and it's hard to um, to look at that person <laughs> to regard them as like, "Oh, you you you're this little sheep who's lost." Um, how do you correct your teacher? <laughs> how do you correct your teacher? Um, how do you correct somebody who doesn't regard themselves as like, well, I'm not the problem here. Um, and trying to remain in this like, no, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I want to bring this back. Reconciliation, all that stuff, it's, you it's can rough. Still, you, can, you can be in the position of the one who's been, who's, who's been sinned against and go to the person wanting to be reconciled, wanting to unify their story and that they won't listen to you. And in the context of church, maybe the third person in authority, maybe you need to bow out and let, let it run its course so others, because perpetrators tend to repeat. You know, <laughs> it happens. And, yeah. And, um, and it just sin doesn't go unchecked, but God no. is not mocked. So, and if, if you know, some bowing out and saying, okay, get yourself out of the picture and yeah. let God take it, it's messy. I mean, there's no getting around it. And with with that illustration, you know, I, I, I'm sure it's happening. I, I used to pay more attention to it than I don't pay attention to it at all anymore. Um, whatever happens in broad American evangelicalism, it's like, I don't have time for that. Um, but I used to. I used to pay attention. And there would always be, like, the, the big mega church pastors, you know, like the cult of personality pastors. And inevitably, scandal. You know, uh, the one that jumps to mind is uh, the dude at Mars Hill, Driscoll. Rob, no, Rob, Bell. Rob Bell. Rob Bell. Uh, Mars. Well, he was a nut, too. Um, oh, Mark Driscoll was a... Uh, Mark Driscoll was, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, he was, he, he was his, his shtick, was, Rob Bell was a different shtick. Uh, Mark Driscoll's shtick was, you know, getting back to being men in gospel. It was more of a kind of angry masculinity <laughs> that he was trying to bring back into Christianity. It's just like, hey. Um, but there was like, there was a, a, I'm not sure if it was, him was a scandal, but I mean, enough stuff was brought out where it, it, it drove him out of that, the church that he founded, essentially. His leadership kind of kicked him out. And it's always, as if you pay attention to these things, what you always see is that the, these pastors will always like acknowledge that, that finally they'll, they'll acknowledge that they, they sin, that they're, they're stepping back because they're, you know, according to they're not... They, they shouldn't be in leadership because they've broken trust, yada, yada, yada. And then you wait a year, just like Mark Driscoll did. <laughs> and a year later, all of a sudden he pops up like halfway across the country, starting a new church. It's like, ah. So yeah, it, they, these, those habits, they don't die. And those tendencies don't send, tend to, and especially when you're dealing with like leaders, especially leaders who have a self-proclaimed word from God and commission from God to do all these things. This is the... <laughs> And, you know, for, for all the words that we might have as the LCMS, at least, you know, if, if I do something stupid and the synod says, nope, you're out, I'm out. <laughs> I can't come to any LCMS church and be like, but, but God called me. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not on the roster, go away. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's hard. And it, the whole process, this whole thing is messy. Um, and, and really, the, the, the beauty of it is, you know, Jesus really doesn't go into a lot of detail. He doesn't say, and like the steps are not like concrete, this is, you know, you do this. Because the thing is like, well, how many, how many times do you go to your brother to listen to him? Once? Twice? Seven, seven times seven? I mean, he only says, go and tell him his fault. He doesn't say how many times. 
Um, how many times do you bring others? How many times does the church deal with it? How long do they deal with it? He doesn't put a bound in there. Um, and that's, that's intentional, because he's like, this is... Well, ultimately, they were asking him who's the greatest, and they were saying this is a power issue we're dealing with, and he yeah. says, no, 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 it's a relationship yeah. issue. Yeah, and, and that's, <laughs> relationships are messy. Yeah. And, but, and, and trying to get it back in that, that mindset of, we're restoring relationship. We want the weakest among us, the most, you know, the ones who are least. You know, and, and it's, 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 it's problematic because we hear who is the greatest, and, and we, we simply think, and like, well, yeah, Jesus subverts it all. The lowest is the highest. The least is the greatest. And we're still thinking in terms of greatest in terms of, like, best. And it's like, this is not talking about the best of the congregation. He's saying the greatest in me. Who is the greatest is the one who is needs Christ the most. You know, because that's that was their whole concern. It was like, who is the greatest among you? I want to sit on your left. I want to sit on your right. I want to be glorified. And Jesus says, the glor the, the greatest, no, is the one who you need to serve the most. Like, look at the bottom rung. Take care of them. They're the greatest. Not that they're awesome. Usually they're not. <laughs> um, we're not. I mean, honestly, when we're down, when we hit rock bottom, we're not at our best. This is not like seeing us on our best day. <laughs> we're probably pretty raw and wounded and in a bad, bad shape. Um, but that makes us the greatest responsibility, the greatest um, need for us to care for, to watch out for, to make sure we don't cause them to sin, we don't tempt them to sin, that we're doing our best to keep them from drifting further and further and further away. I read a question. Sure. We started out this entire section of the gospel, yeah. and we, as you know, you mentioned, we're, we really look picked and chosen all these verses throughout our lifetimes. Um, we know that this is all one composite piece because it says at that time. So this is really one big chunk. We have mm -hmm. to take this all together. Yes. And Absolutely. We interpret it through the lens starting with who is the greatest and then Jesus takes it from there mm -hmm. about not power but yeah. love. And, and really if you look at it even going back a couple chapters um, where you know we had last week and what we get finished today is where it's like who do, who do people say I am and Peter's like oh you're the Christ yeah and then Peter says no this will never happen to you Jesus um, he's he, he's leading them through and saying you guys all have the wrong picture you have the wrong idea let me fix it for you you know you think that Christ should not suffer and die that is wrong let me correct you this is, has to happen um, you think the greatest means this. You're wrong. Let me correct that for you. He's taking them through this whole thing where he's like correcting their their misguided thoughts um, and their understandings, and they're still not going to get it until later. But um, so yeah, this yeah, it's hard to chop it up. You know, the lectionary tries, but I mean, it is part of a, a whole cohesive. I mean, yeah, he's not just. It's where he says, "I have come to." Me be served. Right. To serve. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have time for the last part? No. Of course not. Um, so uh, just give us a summary. Then. So the summary, so whatever you bind on earth, um, if you agree on earth about anything, um, two or more are gathered in my name, there I am among them. It's really kind of the gospel promise there that like, hey, so especially one or more are gathered in my name, when you are coming together to fix this relationship, right, um, I am with you. I mean, it's basically Jesus, because we can look at this and be overwhelmed, and especially when you start getting into this relationship stuff, I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be a mess. And I don't want to deal with people. <laughs> that's just, that's just the stuff there. I don't want to deal with people. Um, but, like, I don't want to work through this. It's, oh, gross. Um, but then Jesus is saying, like, look, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Forgiveness, grace, mercy. Now, judgment too, yes. Um, but if you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. According to his will, yes, but it's like, I'm listening to you. If you come and speak in my name, I am there. If you're gathered around my word, I am there. I am working in this. I am the one working through all of this with you. Um, so really, it kind of is a nice little punctuation. You know, you, you go through all of this, and it's a lot. And you're like, oh, my God. we got to really take care of these people. And he's saying, I'm with you. I 
yes, you can do this. So I know, because yeah, with church, church discipline, which this is not what it's technically about, um, but restoring relationships is rough, it's hard. I'd much rather just ignore everything. You wouldn't have a relationship with that person if you didn't love them to begin with. Well, that, that's true too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it requires a lot of work and it'd be so much easier to ignore this stuff, to paper over it, to just be like, ah, let's just get along. It's like, no. What, what? Ah, it's today's, today's epistle, let love be genuine. Now, loving being genuine is not let your love be perfect. Honestly, I'd say let love be genuine means let love be messy. So we're going to have this next week. Um, so yeah, well, we'll look at this again next week, probably in the epistle. I think I've beaten this horse to death. Um, they call that last part the office of the keys, right? The, the losing? Yeah. 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 Okay. Which, I mean, even in that, it's like I've given you, you know, this is, this is my, I'm, I give you the office to forgive, to reconcile, to bring together. Now also to cast out. To and say you shouldn't be looking at it as a power play. Right, right. Yeah. It's, do it's we not. have that then as believers, the office of the keys? Or can yes, you do. What about um, the catechism? Quickly. You do. You do have the office of the keys. But, <laughs> whatever you say before the but doesn't matter. Um, however, um, as what we have in our polity, what we've said is that you all, as Ascension Lutheran Church, have called me as your pastor to exercise those keys, to exercise the authority of those. So, mm -hmm. well, like, so can you forgive somebody their sins? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, in a public ministry setting, you've called me to do that. Right. Um, which, and it doesn't mean that I'm special. It doesn't mean that because I went to seminary, it makes me different. <laughs> Questions my dead. judgment sometimes, but um, it doesn't mean it, it like I ooh, I got the you know whatever. Um, it just means that um, to to alleviate confusion, so in decency and good order, so that you don't have people going all over the place and doing their own thing. We want to walk together as a synod, walking together. So you call me to exercise that office. So you, you kind of like yeah, you own the you guys own the car. You, they're your keys. And you've called me to be the driver. And you get to sit in the back seat. And I'm driving you around. I get the keys now. They're still your keys. But I'm sh I'm, <laughs> I I'm I'm chauffeuring you. Because I'm serving. See that works. He has the keys. Well, okay, fine. <laughs> you're leasing. <laughs> you're, le you're, you, your name's wrong your your name's on the lease. <laughs> I'm just on the insurance. That makes sense. Sure. All right. <laughs> we'll clear all that up next week. <laughs>